Uh, my name is Gopala Krishnan. I'm the CEO of Atma Technologies and I have around 36 years of experience, 16 years in manufacturing and the last 20 years in IT. Uh, in 2006, we started uh, Atna Technologies. So Atna Technologies is a consulting based uh, enterprise solution partner. We are a product agnostic consulting company, but by choice we do Microsoft products, Microsoft business solutions, two ERPs and one CRM. So that's been predominantly a forte. But uh, in the last uh, two years now, we've been into analytics and automation as well. Again, predominantly on the Microsoft stack, though we're not restricted to the Microsoft stack, we're predominantly revolving around the Microsoft automation and analytics space. Uh, that's one of the uh, uh, tools which we will uh, be talking about on digitization of enterprises. This is going to be something, uh, because there'll be varied audiences, we'll be starting from the basics. We plan to conduct a uh, similar series of um, uh, webinars, uh, taking it slowly so that people can have a, grad a gradual insight into what digitization is all about. You, you'll just see today what we'll have uh, uh, a digitization of enterprises, the first basic steps, how do we put in place, what is that in store for us, which I'll cover in a, in a, in a bit. And then we have uh, the technology per se, the power platform and how a uh, couple of uh, use cases and one demo, which will give you an insight into how data can be collected and what we do with the data, how do we analyze the data, and then how do we do some predictive analytics and how do we actually you know, realize the benefit of the feedback loop into the into the, some, some of the areas like what you said, even on the product side, how can it transform the product itself? So that that's the core uh, agenda today on um, what we do. The other parts of the power platform and the use cases and the demo will be taken by my colleague Kamesh. Uh, who, so a uh, little about Atna and then we will straight away move into the uh, uh, in, into the webinar. Like I said, Atna is a, is, we started this business in 2006, predominantly into the, uh, walked into the dynamic space. None of us were dynamic consultants when we started. We all came from a bunch of uh, QAD uh, is another enterprise solution. We came from that background and then we felt uh, by choice, we went for Microsoft. We saw Microsoft's uh, vision and investment into technology and uh, the top three enterprise solutions in the space today across the globe happens to be SAP, Oracle and Microsoft. So we said, okay, we will have our uh, base as Microsoft, but we still retain our uh, core competency in consulting. And uh, in the uh, in, in this space of supply chain, I conduct supply chain webinars. We do some very good work in terms of re-engineering supply chains, uh, reducing turnaround times, uh, improving business processes along the way. Uh, that helps us uh, align our information technology goals as well. Because once you have a simple re-engineered process, then mapping that onto the uh, tool becomes that much more easier and simple. So that's been, uh, our, our forte has been manufacturing, retail, distribution, textiles, services, logistics, all these areas we would have deployed solutions uh, over the years, over the last 15 years, we've uh, deployed multiple solutions and we're not restricted to, uh, today we've, we've gone beyond Microsoft, but predominantly our, our, our uh, solutions still revolve around Microsoft, though we do some uh, surround Microsoft technologies as well, as well like uh, .NET. We have also have other uh, uh, partnerships which we'll speak about in the coming slides. Yeah, so we are basically a Microsoft dynamic shop. Uh, and all the products around it, the D365 uh, finance and operations, the Dynamics Nav, the uh, Dynamics 365 CRM, the Business Central, and the Power Platform. Power Platform will be the main uh, focus today. And we have other partnerships with regard to the People HR, the Senate Business Solutions, the Insight, uh, Actionable Insights, and of course, the Planning and Scheduling Tool, which we have, we are business partners to. But predominantly, 90% of the business comes from the uh, Microsoft stack. And uh, the uh, topic of the day, as I said, digital transformation, it, it actually impacts people, process, and the enterprise, technology, right? People, process, technology, but the two main components which get impacted with digital transformation are the people and the enterprises on the other side. 
So when we look at uh, digital transformation, and as I said, when I, I I come a long way on completely manual systems, and I've seen this transformation along the journey. And if you look at uh, uh, while the digital transformation world might be new, we've all been doing uh, moving on to you know trying to completely do from a paper pencil kind of a work to put that onto Excel and something on at somewhere along the line a legacy application on Fox Pro Cobol gets developed and we say that's the next thing we moved on before we moved on to enterprise solutions, uh, standard enterprise solutions. So there are, the journey goes on. And today we have reached a stage when we can truly say that we can digitize the enterprise. When we say digitizing the enterprise, we mean that we can connect all applications along the way. Uh, and the larger the enterprise, the number of multiple applications in the enterprises increases. Right. We all know that the uh, in an enterprise you have lot of lots and lots of applications and many of them are information silos. One doesn't talk to the other. And uh, when when you look at the uh, the fundamental aspect of this is the data that runs across right. Whether it is manual systems, whether it is the enterprise solutions, whether it is you know today's uh, new age technologies, data is fundamental. And data is in, a, in an organization, the organization is dynamic. Processes keep changing, products keep changing, business lines keep changing, and data also has to keep pace with this change. So organizations which have implemented uh, technologies in the, late, in the early 90s and uh, even in the late 90s, uh, many organizations do not change the uh, business, uh, uh, the, the systems intelligence part of it. They keep running the same applications. As a result, there is a the there is there is a loss of data in the in the way data is captured and processed and given to the business managers to take actionable decisions. So, over a period of time, people have their own spreadsheets. If you look at even the most organized uh, uh, companies which we consult, you find people having a tendency to have. Uh, information in spreadsheets uh, apart from the systems they use and most often than not the spreadsheets uh, there is a download of information from the enterprise solutions or any other legacy applications onto uh, these spreadsheets and then these spreadsheets are you know converted into MIS reports and published and so on and so forth so what happens across when multiple information silos exist you may not have a classic example would be uh, item inventory. Uh, an item inventory in one pro in one application may be called in a different application, or it can be duplicate parts, or so many things which come, which actually brings into question the sanity of data within the enterprise. To help have one version of the truth in the organization, it is important to collect the data at the source, have a cleansing mechanism, clean the data. When you say cleaning the data, it means eliminating duplicates, ensuring there is one version uh, right across the organization. Necessary sometimes, you may have to transform the data to ensure that the information in one source is compatible to the information in the other source. And what do you do with all this data? You've got to do some predictive analytics. Make sure that you can make meaningful decisions in, in the data what is collected. And once the data is uh, you're analyzing, you can do some uh, taking some decisions and feedback and then put it back into the system to collect the data, whether your feedback is effective, whether it is working. So this chain keeps going on. And that is very fundamental when the data transforms within the organization and enterprise. This is the fundamental process, is the fundamental lifeline of the business in digital transformation in digitizing enterprises. Your data needs to keep pace with the change of changing business processes and enterprises. The outcomes and strategies of a digital transformation, there are only four fundamental strategies and uh, outcomes in a digital transformation process, namely engaging your customer, your employee, uh, your empowering your employees, which, and you're optimizing your operations and transforming your products. All these were even in the 80s and 70s. But what's the difference in digital transformation? So the way 
the uh, uh, outcomes have changed and what is this fundamental because from age old you are still engaging with your customer you are still collecting information from your customer still you are trapping demand from a customer you are still servicing your customer so what's the way what has changed in this entire process similarly with your employees and your operations the fundamental difference today is when the way you are engaging with your customer has changed because you are trying to see a uh, behavior pattern in your customer you are trying to trap the customer demand as soon as it is uh, germinated you know and transmitting the demand across the supply chain so fast so that you can be ahead of your competitor and service that customer uh, your customer uh, is also on other uh, forums like linkedin like uh, social media and if you can make that sense of the behavior pattern trap it and then communicate it within your supply chain and be able to respond in a affirmative way to your customer more likely often than not you are going to retain your customer or win more orders from him for example all of us have been in this uh, space for some time and all of us will take a flight how many of us has noticed as you pick up your boarding pass you will be asked uh, you need a window seat and you prefer a vegetarian meal right there is too much information at the counter even before you have walked in to get your boarding pass this is nothing but a customer engagement at the right at it and you are in your bearing your data being right there you search something in google and there is an ad popping up which is a relevant ad for you uh, there is something which you are uh, searching on the net and then as you play an app there is an advertisement popping up which is relevant to that so everywhere there is a workspace mind space being uh, captured to ensure that your engagement model with your customer is strengthened and you are able to trap the customer uh um, demand and behavior pattern and change in behavior to ensure that you can transmit this digitization starts there empowering your employees where are the uh, the the, the uh, a truly empowered organization helps to understand more than what the person contribute just at work away from work what kind of tools will empower them to execute their work responsibilities if you go to the operations it's even more complex multiple missions and mostly today most are uh, most missions have moved away from the totally manual missions to semi automatic or fully automatic missions and they have to be compatible and talk to your applications on the shop floor and and on to your transaction systems optimizing your operations in terms of the turnaround time reducing your turnaround time all these needs means the velocity of travel path of your uh, data from these missions and the ability to talk and be nimble footed is very very important coming back to the products very important that uh, you are staying right on top of the curve in terms of understanding what your customer needs and bringing in those changes and transform transforming your products and making it you know compatible and in 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 the latest technology in terms of uh, ensuring that the customer is delighted all the time all this is possible only if you can trap the customer demand get the feedback into the mechanism get your operations to get optimized be nimble footed ensuring that you can quickly turn around whatever the customer wants and this entire supply chain is very very uh, no smart in terms of uh, transmitting velocity the velocity of data into the chain and getting it uh, truly actioned with actionable insights so this is the actual outcome of the uh, uh, the, the uh, digital transformation curve now looking at what do we have today if you look at the current enterprise landscape of it or technology you will have monolithic suites where well, what do you mean by monolithic suites a large enterprise application sitting there and you know not it's it's, it's like taking a bmw or a you know monster of a car onto a very narrow street what does it mean you lost the flexibility of being very very fast and agile so agility and being flexible has been the cornerstone of any business success today's applications and new age technologies makes it very 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 multiple and very modular business application what do you mean by this you can your your crm your crm applications can talk to your uh, social media platforms can talk to any uh, virtually any Uh, data out there on the net for example in uh, even on the procurement side if your uh, metal parts are procured from the london metal exchange commodity prices you could have a feed coming into your transaction system in the latest 
uh, new gen technologies which enables the productivity of the uh, organizations in terms of uh, having both addressing both structured and unstructured data what do you mean by structured and unstructured data structured data is there already in your enterprise solutions either in the form of a legacy application or in forms of homegrown applications and your unstructured data is data collected by the end users in word excel powerpoint or any one one note or any of the uh, text uh, text things which you uh, capture and reside at the desktops the ability to connect this unstructured and structured data and then pull out a callable mis and actionable information is very very important and that's what today's business applications do gone are the days of the disconnected silos today you have artificial inter intelligence and connected data graphs which combine both structured and unstructured data and gives you information at your at your fingertips customizations is a word you know uh, heard very well very very common in enterprise solutions uh, deployment of any no no standard application suits any business directly so there could be a 85% fit and 15% gets into customization zone today and and when you in the olden applications if you look the old age uh, technologies your customization when you are is is a bane because when you want to upgrade technology these customizations don't get upgraded so there's a cost is a it's a baggage you carry but today's technologies allow you to have composite apps your customizations can just migrate seamlessly very very important to have a common data model so that's what today's theme is all about in terms of the how the digital transformation journey which began maybe in the um, late early 90s but today it is truly transformed in terms of what technology can do how it can connect to various machines on the shop floor various uh, social media platforms various other apps on your mobile and yet we are able to take real time decision making moving on to the next slide which is what is the topic of the day and uh, kamesh will take over i talk about microsoft this is what you see, what you see on the screen is what is microsoft power platform it is the first step in digital uh, transformation and it's an truly enabling the digital digitizing the enterprise it has four components the power apps which is the data capture and uh, basic data capture tool you, as i said once you capture the data you go to analyze the data power bi does it for you and once you have uh, uh, the analytics done and you have repetitive processes which can be automated then power automate kicks in and you have a chatbot called virtual power agents and uh, kamesh will take you through this specific uh, demo in terms of the power automation and power platform and how digitization and the typical use cases in the scenario over to kamesh thank you hey. hi everyone uh, so a brief introduction about myself uh, i'm kamesh i work at atna technologies limited as a functional consultant for dynamics 365 business central as well as nav and i also work with microsoft power platform so uh, to get started what is power platform power platform consists of four applications what go also said there is power apps there is power bi there is power automate and there is power virtual agents all of these four come together to form a very powerful business applications platform called the power platform how it all works is every organization the most critical and the important resource is the data you analyze the data using power bi or any virtualization tool once you have analyzed it it will give you insights that this is the place where the actual bottleneck is or this is the place where you have to reform your existing processes so the first step you figure out this is where the data is lagging so you can use power apps to enable capture of data more efficiently again that acts as a feedback and again sends the data back, back to power bi which will help you analyze that data further so once you have analyzed the data you will figure out these are the certain step of processes which can which are repeating over time so you can use power automate to automate the same so what it does is it actually creates a digital feedback loop so taking the data automating it enabling inputs and this cycle keeps on repeating making your business processes more efficient so how will it help you these applications can connect to 150 plus data connectors that are available out of the box the ai builder that is the artificial intelligence builder becomes a part of this ecosystem so you can use it for variety of operations for example for object classification sentiment analysis 
forms processing and so on so what's so what we are trying to say here is you can analyze the data you can act on the data and you can automate the data this is what power platform enables you to do so let's talk about uh, some use cases that you can use it for again it can be changed according to the business requirements but these are just some of the use cases that will give you some idea you can use it for invoice processing using ai so you can have an application like a power app in which you can enter data related to your invoices you can use ai to extract the data from those invoices and you can post them automatically onto the system currently in your float there are people who do the inverting of an item then the purchase but the purchasing department processes the purchase orders then so on so there is a time delay so you can automate the inverting of inventory so as soon as it hits the gate you can have a app there which will start a series of approvals or steps that will automatically be followed thus decreasing the total turnaround time that it takes for an actual inverting of an inventory you can automate your payment processing your vendor sends you an invoice stating hey can you make a payment for the same it takes a lot of time for people to figure out whether the item is there or everything as it is in order or not what if you can automate the same the system goes checks in, in, inside your erp figures out hey everything is okay it comes back gives you an approval you just approve it that's it your payment processing is again made efficient as discussed on the previous slide you can have artificial intelligence so you can use object detection you can use form processing there is business card readers there is sentiment analysis there is n number of applications of on how you can use ai let's say for a manufacturing business we have object detection it can automatically scan an image and tell you n number of these items exist in that image and so on category classification can help by reading the mail or a content of a text it will automatically classify which category does it belong to so that appropriate actions can be carried out coming to help or service desk or or customer experience this is where you can use chatbots so let's say currently your customer picks up the phone calls you what happens sometimes is the sales person is busy so what if you can have a chatbot there the chatbot the customer can directly interact with the chatbot and say hey do you have this item in inventory it checks it says would you like to raise an order if it says yes again a proper workflow takes place it can send data back to power apps from power apps you can again say approve add more data that's how it will go you can use this entire suite of applications for sales purchase and accounts planning you're sitting in the board room you're deciding what needs to be done what if you have a power app there in which everybody says this is agenda does everybody approve everybody clicks on approve a flow takes over using power automate automatically creates a automatically creates a purchase and a sales order for you in the back end and also sends an intimation to the guy on the production floor stating hey this item has to be completed by this day we have a demand to meet and so on the last case employee onboarding currently whenever we hire employees what happens is there are certain step of process certain steps are skipped so what if you can have a very distinct flow using power apps that will say first step you have to raise a request second step get necessary documents third step to a set of interviews and so on each of these steps has to be followed so these are the certain use cases which it can be applied so today's use case that we are going to talk about is a quality app so we are going to show you how we can build a quality app using the power platform and very specifically power app to make your pro quality process a bit more efficient so i am going to take you through the actual demonstration so before that let me talk about how it will help you out so let's say you have a manufacturing line there are multiple lines there and in between you don't have any idea of how, what is happening from the manufacturing line to the place where it is going to be sent out so the quality app will stay in between which is the power apps here it will take data which is being provided from the data source you can do your quality tests on the basis of that quality test that generates the data which acts as an input to power bi which will help you gain insights on your manufacturing line itself so what you are doing is you are taking your data from the manufacturing line doing a quality test you are figuring out what's going on with it then you also have your quality returns let's say some but a customer returns some items back to you so you also get after sales service there and then it feeds on the data onto power bi it is giving you more insights on where you have to improve so let me take you through the actual demonstration this demonstration is to show you a quality app developed using microsoft power platform so either you can type in your username or 
you can use the scan button here and scan the QR code which will automatically get your username for you after that you can click on login so it takes you to the menu screen in our menu screen we have options like do a quality test or if you want to look up a test if you want to create a walkthrough or if you want to book your returns so we will start with do a quality test so if i click on do a quality test there is a scan button there so what will happen is once you click on scan it will automatically get the model number that is supposed to be scanned using the qr code so let's go ahead and do that i just click on scan i point it towards one of the qr codes and if you can see on the bottom the dslr a700 m002 came up so that's the model number so let me put some serial number here once i do that i click on continue depending upon the model number selected it automatically takes me to the tests that belong to that model number and in this screen if you can see there are many different tests that are that can be performed on that model number so let me they can set up downs here that is available now as a new person i may or may not know what to select so the system has a inbuilt walkthrough now i am going to play the walkthrough for you i am going to stop it in midway but you'll get the idea hi this test is for inspecting lens and aperture what you need to do is take out the gap on the lens and have a visual inspection on the side so a person who is even new will if, if he follows these instructions he will exactly know what he can select and so on so let me just select one of the options i will say hey this is damaged in this criteria so i can just select damaged now if you can see few more options came up right for example if you want to upload files and stuff like that so i will say yes i want to attach an attachment so i'm going to select either camera or files so i can attach it directly from my phone or i can take a picture so in this case i'm just going to take a picture so once i do that i can click on okay and this actually becomes the part of that now you can see it says right the file the number of files uploaded is equal to 1 and so on it also has the ability to record your own narrations so that if the person who is doing the test wants to record something specific that person can do so as well now if i go back to the main screen if you see it says the status is in progress now let's say you are doing your tests then it becomes very important for a person to preview what he has done so we also have a have a preview screen here So if you look at the preview screen you can say it says right inspect lens mount and aperture you selected damage there it also tells you the date and time So now let me go back here after doing everything once you're satisfied with it you can click on save For this instance it is saving without validation but of course there can be validations that if all the tests are not done it cannot be saved and so on So I can click on okay submit here what it will do is it will go into the backend and save it to the system So the preview helps you figure out what has gone wrong so that you can correct the same as well. System gives you the way of doing that. And there can be multiple pop-ups like this just to make sure that the flow of the data or the user can go back to the initial screen and so on. Once it is posted, you will see that the system also gives you a notif notification stating hey this was successfully completed and so on. Now let me go back to the main screen again. So now that we have done a quality test then it then the second thing is somebody would like to look up a test right so this is a preview screen so we have two separate models here and out of that model the serial number changes if i select the second model if you see there is only one serial number and so on so let me select one of the tests here which has some data if you see the last the test that we performed is in the end i will select one test here this one so if i just click on continue it automatically brings in all the tests and the values that were selected in those and also if i click on this button here it actually takes me to the picture that was attached to that and so on so i can review the entire test and figure out what is the status of it who performed it and everything is saved on the backend system okay now we have looked up a test now let's talk about a walk through what is a walk through walk through is a guided 
path that a new employee or any new person can take so that he knows exactly what to do in the cases of that test let's say today we have a new employee and we have to train him so rather than us having to teach him everything he can just go into the app listen to the walkthrough and complete the entire test so you create that here you can add as many walkthroughs as you want using the plus button on the top and you can record it in your own dialect in your own language so the person who is catering to your needs will actually listen to that and you will help him do his activities more efficiently so this is where you record the same you can remove add multiple it's entirely up to you how do you want to manage that the last one is called book returns this as this is a quality app you are doing a quality on an item then if suppose an item was returned then what happened then what went wrong with the quality test is what this book returns is for so if i open my book returns screen here you can see it is showing me some of the returns that were done in the system so let me open the first one here it says the serial number was this the model was this the return date was this now it's telling me at which parameter of quality did the person make the return so the person said the inspect lens and aperture coupling was not up to the mark as how i felt it would be so now looking at this app i know the person who returned it was kamesh and the inspecting person was the, now we know the ins inspecting person was kamesh so now if you scroll down if you see the reason for return that person the customer has also attached the image here so if you can see the screw is missing okay so now using this app itself you are able to know that who is the person who did that test and now using the preview test you'll be able to figure out okay so if that was available there then why did it when then why was it returned and so on so you can keep a track of the activities like why wasn't the quality test performed correctly or if there is something fishy going on so it's entirely up to you on how you want to control so you can create your returns from this screen itself the system will ask you multiple parameters you can select that you can add your pictures you can type in additional remarks and so on the system allows you to do that so this is a demonstration on the quality app thank you okay so uh, now that we have looked at the demo of the quality app so uh, any question to have uh, uh, you all on this webinar and hope to have you uh, in our subsequent series as well thank you so much thank you thank sir you. thank you for your time sir